Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to easily create your own lithophane using free software Blender and your own home 3D printer. So I'm starting off with a basic image and I'm going to adjust the gamma and the levels just to increase the contrast in this image a little bit. This is my cat, Archie. And you can, of course, also go to brightness and contrast and play with those levels as well. However you want to do it, just to get a good difference between the bright and dark areas. You can use any image editing software. I'm just using Photoshop here. You can also turn it black and white if you want to, but it doesn't really make much difference to the next step. Next, we want to cut it out from the background so that the background is completely white. You can see I'm just going round Archer here. And once I've got him fully selected, when I did this properly, obviously I spent more time making sure it was selected, I would cut it out. So here it is cut out from the background and you can see it's completely white in the surrounding area. So you can save that to whatever format you want. You do need to use a reasonably good quality image, but it doesn't have to be very, very high quality. And then I'm going to switch over to some free software called Blender 3D. You can get that from blender.org. I'm going to assume you know a certain amount how to use this package, and I have got lots of tutorials on my other channel. And now I'm going to create a plane, look from above, and scale it up, and then scale it in on the x-axis, as that's the aspect ratio of my image. It's all just approximate at the moment. Going into edit mode and subdividing. I'm now going to subdivide quite a lot more, try 100, that might be enough. And I'm now going to unselect the edges. I'm using Control minus, you can see my key press is on the bottom left hand side. So I've got an area in the middle, which is where my image is going to go. Because of the aspect ratio, I'm going to just increase the height a little bit by selecting that row and then just deleting the extra bits on the edge. And then the same at the top. Then I'm going to come over to the vertex properties Add a new vertex group and assign it, and then just reselect it just to check that it worked. And then I just selected it all and projected from view bounds just to UV unwrap it. Now I'm adding a new modifier called the displace modifier. Click new the texture and then say open, make sure it's image or movie, and select the image that I created. And I've got a very crude version of the lithophane. You can see there. It's obviously going the wrong way. I could have inverted the picture. I'm just going to come down to image sampling and set it to clip. Now we come back to the modifiers, come down to strength and set it to minus one. And there you see it's going in the right direction now. I'll set it to UV coordinates and select the UV map. And I'll select my vertex group, which is what gives me that border. And now I can play with the strength to get it more reasonable. And you can see it's starting to work, but it's still very crude. So I'm now going to add a subdivision surface and make sure that that's on top of the displace modifier, which just adds extra vertices. And I'm going to do two levels. You can now see it's got a lot more detail to it, but there's a lot more vertices as well. And I've just applied with control A the scale and therefore I just need to adjust the strength again. You need to apply the scale just to make sure all the dimensions work when you try to print it. It's just a plane at the moment. So I need to make this a solid object so that I can print it. Just scaling on the Z a little there just to make it a little thicker. And I'm now applying subdivision surface and the displacement. So this is now purely geometry. You can see there's a lot of geometry there. And I'm selecting the edges. Alt Shift right click and then Control Plus and then E to extrude down to give me a box within which the object can exist just below the lowest point on the lithophane area, and then F to fill. We've now got a little box, but you don't necessarily want the lithophane itself protruding above the surface of the box. I'm going to select vertex group, and then I'm going to use select inverse. So I've got everything except for the lithophane area. So I've just selected the top of the box surface, and I'm just dragging that up, and that will basically protect the lithophane if it falls over on its face. And that's basically the modeling done. And I'll just show you what it looks like with a surface render. So this is just light falling off it. But of course, that's not strictly how a lithophane works. So I'm now going to add some 3D materials to it. This isn't a Blender tutorial, so I'll just quickly do this. I'm just adding a translucent material as well as the surface material so that we can get an idea of how this is going to work. It just mixes a surface reflecting material and a translucent material. And I'm going to stand the lithophane up. Those planes you can see are lights in my scene. And let's have a look at that. There's not much light shining through yet. So I'm going to make the key light a little dimmer and then reorient and scale up the light that's behind it. These lights don't show directly in the scene. So we can now see, roughly speaking, what it's going to look like as a lithophane. 
You can see where it's thicker, more light is absorbed. And now we're about ready to transfer it over to our slicer. In my case, I use a program called Simplify 3D. It's a fairly expensive piece of software, but it does seem to cope with an awful lot of issues, and I find it a lot easier to use. So here is our lithophane in the slicer, and you can see there's no problem with any of the normals, so that should print OK. You want a reasonable layout height, but it doesn't necessarily have to be maximum. It doesn't have to be solid all the way through. In fact, to some extent, it's better if it isn't. But obviously, you have to be careful because your infill pattern will show through unless it's a very fine infill pattern. And you can see I'm using 230 and a heated build platform because I printed this in ABS and I didn't want it to warp. If you print it in PLA, you don't necessarily need a heated build platform. So then we prepare to print and there's the prepared G-code, and you can see there exactly how the lithophane works. So we export that to the printer and print it off, and here's the final result. And it's on a windowsill, so we can see how it works. So that's what it looks like just lying down. It looks strange from an angle, but then once you start to look at it with the light shining through it, it sort of springs to life. And in the real world, there's actually a sort of 3D look to it as well, even though it's only a 2D image. And there suddenly it looks right, even though those white patches actually go in, they don't look as though they are. And even with two eyes, as it were, stereo vision, it still looks very convincing. So I hope you find that useful. I'd be very happy to see the results of your own efforts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.